Yes, absolutely. I think you're right, and, and we benefit so much on what is happening. Um, can we make this real for like two seconds about a real thing? You bet. Um, Pebble Mine. Yeah. The proposition of Pebble, Pebble Mine right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hearing all kinds of science. I'm hearing numbers. I'm hearing, you know, John Shively stand up and say, you'll be fine. I'm, I, I'm hearing all of this, and I don't believe them. You are correct to not believe them. <laughs> Another great example that figures right into that thinking is before the Exxon Valdez oil spill, before the pipeline was built, there were several promises made by the oil companies about don't worry, everything's going to be fine, not one drop of oil is going, going to go into Prince William Sound, you'll have double hull tankers, a great vessel traffic system, best oil spill response system in the world. No, the ink had not dried on the Trans-Alaska okay. Pipeline Act before all those promises went away. Now there may be better governance and, and government oversight now of a project like Pebble, but really we don't need Pebble. We don't need the copper and the gold that's going to come out of that project. There's enough already up into the economy. This is where Alaska's got to get on the front edge of the wave and realize that a lot of the material efficiencies and energy efficiencies that the world is adopting right now will make a lot of what we're planning 20 years, 10 years into the future obsolete and unnecessary. What, we're not going to have a smelter at Point McKenzie? I sure as hell hope no. not. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up about Exxon because, yes, yeah. all those promises were broken. Yeah. I fault more than Joe Hazelwood, the drunk driver we fetched up. Right. Like <laughs> that's, you know, a good thing. Um, more than that, I mean, the federal government and the state government here, here. fell down. Yeah. Those policies were in place. The RACUS ra radar was turned off. Yeah. Um, they should have never been able to allowed to come in and out of uh, Prince William Sound without having a barge with containment. Mm -hmm. That barge had been sitting in dry dock and was iced in. Those laws were in place to protect Alaskans, yeah. and they were not held up, and they were not enforced by the federal government or the state government. So even if, you know, I keep hearing this, um, you know, we've got this fabulous system and yeah. we're so highly regulated. You're going to have to go through 97 hula hoops backwards with Crisco all over you to be able to make <laughs> this happen. Even though I'm hearing all that, it's like, yeah, they could say, okay, but then what's the state going to do? The state still has a responsibility. And the problem is when you have industry come and guarantee a result, no spill, no problem. I mean, that's clearly the perspective that they want us to believe. The state has the obligation to look and see what's the risk, what's the potential harm here. And then at that point, the state should step in and say, that harm, that potential harm, outweighs the potential benefit. And we don't do that analysis well enough. Absolutely. Ah, OK. OK, can we done be serious now? Yeah, we're going to come back. Move on to lighter topics? Yeah, we're going to come back and shake up a little bit. throwing pebbles and start throwing rocks? Yes. Okay. I'm going to throw a rock at pebble when we get back from this break. <laughs> so surreal to have a television show. I'm Shannon Moore, this is more up north, and I grew up with no television. So the fact that I'm on yours right now is a little, well, <laughs> awkward at times for me to get through my head. Um, this is the part, the panel's going to love this. Um, Ethan Berkowitz, Steve Heimel, Rick Steiner. Uh, we have questions from the audience that I don't get to see until they just hand them to me. How are the martinis here? And you're my lifeline. My multiple phone a friend choice something okay. you know. How are the martinis here? Fan damn tastic. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. They're wonderful here at Bernie's. Uh, they're dirty, which I like. Uh, isn't it possible that Sarah Palin will turn out to be a right wing conservative? Yes. Oh, sorry, that's not placeholder for a more dangerous person who will have more political astuteness. Um, does anyone want to take that? <laughs> I personally can't imagine anybody more dangerous than what I've seen in the last couple of days. And I can't imagine her holding a place for anybody. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a great 
great question. Why do you hate Sarah? <laughs> you know what's funny? I, I, I get this. I get this usually in emails that misspell Yuri whatever fill in the blank. Um, I don't hate Sarah Palin. In fact, I'd like to say in the spirit of Thanksgiving this week, thank you, Sarah Palin. <laughs> <laughs> Betcha. You betcha. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what do you think about civil disobedience fishing on the Yukon this summer? Steve Heimel, Lifeline. It was fantastic. Here. It turned out they were right. Charges have been dropped. Uh, they did the right thing. They consulted with the elders. They were very deliberate about it. And uh, what was it? Marshall, wasn't it? Was yeah, it and Marshall. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think, it, uh, I think it worked out. I mean, they didn't get as many fish as they would like to have. But uh, they were completely right. They were vindicated.